Back in the day when people had patellar tendon pain, they would diagnose it patellar tendonitis. When you add an itis at the end of something, it means that inflammation is causing pain, and the way to get rid of inflammation is to rest the area. But if you look at the research, it shows that rest or immobilization is actually very bad for tendons. It's bad for the structure of tendons, and it's bad for the function of tendons. So with just that much knowledge, you would think that everyone with patellar tendon pain should not be resting. They should get on a loading program to build up their structures and to build up their function. But that is not completely accurate. If we look at the tendinopathy continuum and use ultrasound imaging, we can see that there are going to be different presentations at the structural level when someone presents with a patellar tendon pain. When someone gets an ultrasound image, they often do this color coding where you can see the echotype one would be the healthy tendon, the most stable and continual, and echotype four would be the least stable and continual or unhealthy tendon. So if we pair this with the tendinopathy continuum, looking at this photo, the first one on the left is going to be a normal tendon structure, mostly echotype one. When you get to the middle, this is a reactive tendon there's a lot more echotype 2 and a little bit echotype 3 and then when you get to the degenerative tendon it's going to be significantly echotype 3 and the continuum will look like this if you take a normal tendon overload it excessively it's going to turn into a reactive tendon but you have the opportunity to turn it back to a normal tendon if you offload the person if you take that reactive tendon and you continue to overload the person, that's where it will go into tendon disrepair and possibly a degenerative tendinopathy. So if we use an example of a young person who's never had tendon pain and they get their first bout of tendon pain, it's probably a reactive tendon. All you have to do is rest them a little bit and they're going to normalize. If you take someone who's had off and on tendon pain for their entire life, they probably have a degenerative tendon. This was something Enda King talked about in our podcast where he said chronic injuries are acute injuries where the window of opportunity to turn them and keep them as acute injuries was lost. I recently experienced this reactive tendinopathy for myself where I injured my right ankle playing basketball. I took a month off. Then once I felt better, I went to play basketball again for about 90 minutes. About two days later, my left Achilles tendon blew up. I've never had left Achilles tendon pain in my life. It was hard to walk around for three or four days, but what I did was I just took it really easy. I rested it for a bit, and after those three to four days, the Achilles tendon pain completely went away. There was no loading program I had to do. All I had to do was rest it a little bit. So if we look at tendon rehab as decreasing pain and improving function, if you have someone with a reactive tendon, all they have to do is rest a little bit, pain will go away, function will improve. If you have someone with a degenerative tendon, they've had it for months or years, resting will not do that. Resting will decrease pain, but it won't improve function. If they want to improve function, they have to get on a loading program and potentially look at their biomechanics. So try that out. Hopefully that helps. Enjoy.